In this video, we're going to look at how to find the vertical asymptotes of a given rational function. So let's take a look at a few examples. So if we're given the rational function f of x equals 5x squared divided by 3 plus x, we want to find all of the vertical asymptotes if they exist for this function. Um, so vertical asymptotes occur at domain restrictions of our rational function. So we know that in a rational function, the denominator is not allowed to equal zero. And what actually happens at the value that makes our denominator zero is we get a vertical asymptote. So if we take this three plus x and we figure out what value makes this zero, so we subtract x, we get that x cannot equal negative three. Uh, this tells us that we have a vertical asymptote A vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So the equation of our vertical asymptote, it's a vertical line that has the equation of x equals negative 3. So whatever makes our denominator undefined is where we get vertical asymptotes. So let's look at another example. So for this example, we are given. Um, the function g of x equals the quantity x minus 3 divided by the quantity x plus 2 times x minus 2. So again, vertical asymptotes occur when our denominator is equal to 0. We're looking for domain restrictions. So we know from this that x plus 2 cannot equal 0 because that's going to be a domain restriction and x minus 2 cannot equal 0. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, we get that x cannot equal negative 2. If we add 2 to both sides, we get that x cannot equal positive 2. So this gives us vertical asymptotes. These two together give us a vertical asymptote at the equations uh, x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So we have two vertical asymptotes in this case. So let's take a look at this example again, trying to find vertical asymptotes. So whenever you're trying to find vertical asymptotes, it's best to write your polynomial function in simplest terms, which means we usually want to factor anything that we can. And then if anything can cancel, then we'll do that because that's going to give us um, a little bit different kind of value. So we can simplify the denominator here. So our numerator is still um, x minus 1. The denominator factors to be x plus 4 times x plus 1. So nothing cancels. But from this, we have um, that x plus 4 cannot equal 0, and x plus 1 cannot equal 0. So we get that x cannot equal negative 4, and x cannot equal negative 1. And then at those two values, we're going to get vertical asymptotes. We're going to get vertical asymptotes at those two values. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 4 and at x equals negative 1. So those are vertical asymptotes. And the last example, so let's uh, again, let's factor this. So the numerator is going to factor to be. Uh, x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 1 and the denominator factors to be x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 2. So we know that we have domain restrictions, right? We have x plus 2 cannot equal 0 and we know that x minus 2 cannot equal 0. But if we look at this, we know that this x plus 2 uh, and this x plus 2, they cancel. And when we have a factor that actually cancels, it still is included as part of the domain restrictions, but it actually doesn't give us a vertical asymptote. Remember in another video, in a previous video, we said that that's called a removable discontinuity. So what happens here is we actually get a hole in our graph for the value at whatever makes this zero. And we'll look at what that means in just a second. So this does not give us a vertical asymptote. So not a vertical asymptote. 
but this one will be. So add two and we get that x cannot equal two. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals two, x equals two. So this is not a vertical asymptote. This is actually a hole in our graph. So this occurs when x, so we get that x cannot equal two. So this occurs when x equals two. So the reduced form of this uh, rational function is x plus one divided by x minus two. All right, that's the simplest terms of this polynomial function. So we actually have a hole when x equals negative two. So we actually can figure out what the actual um, ordered pair would be for the hole because it's going to be a point on our graph. So if we take negative two and we plug it into our reduced form, that's going to give us some y value. But since this is part of the domain restriction, we know that this value isn't defined there. So there's going to have to be a hole at that point. So if we look at what k of negative two is, we can see that, okay, it's negative two plus one divided by negative two minus two, which gives me a negative one divided by negative four or one fourth. So that means that at negative two for the x and one fourth for the y, we have a hole, a hole in the graph. So there's a hole at negative two, one fourth. So although it's not a vertical asymptote, it is a discontinuity and it's called a removable discontinuity, which results in something uh, like a hole in our graph.